Man, you guys. All right. So it might be early for the cookie jar song, but it's not too early for trigonometry. So when we're looking at a triangle like this, we are providing an angle, right? When we are providing an angle, that is going to be our subject angle, right? So automatically, what I want you guys to do is when you are provided an angle, when you see an angle, automatically label your adjacent side and your opposite side. Hypotenuse should already be good, right? But if anything, guys, you don't need to do any math right now. Just at least label the sides so you don't get them mixed up later, right? Now, if you didn't already write this down, you're going to want to make sure you write it down again so you do not forget it. The adjacent side is the side of the angle that connects your angle with the right angle. So here's my angle. Here's the right angle. So therefore, this is the adjacent side. We also remember that always the angle where the 90 degree angle points to is what we call the hypotenuse. And then this side is going to be directly opposite of my angle. So that's what we call the opposite side. All right. So now we have three trigonometric functions that we introduced last class period. We have the sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, and we have the tangent of an angle, right? Now remember, um, well actually, yeah, I'll write them in there. Sine represents opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine represents the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent represents the ratio, or tangent of an angle represents the ratio of opposite over adjacent. So we are provided an angle, which would represent our theta. And we're, represent, and we're also provided two sides of the triangle. One as a number and one as a variable. And so by looking at those two as one is a variable, one is a variable, Dennis, what are we provided? What is our 12? Our 12 is what? What side is the 12? Adjacent, it's the opposite. And the x is? We don't have any adjacent, right? So Dennis, what is the only trigonometric function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse? The sine. So therefore, we're not going to do cosine. We're not going to do tangent. We now need to solve using the sine function. So remember, theta represents our angle. All right? So now I do sine of 63 degrees, because the trigonometric functions are functions of an angle, is equal to the ratio of 12 over x. All right? Now, this one was a little bit more difficult than what we went over. But guys, now it's just a basic algebra. All right? So now we need to solve for this. And I'll actually do it over here to show a little bit more work. So sine of 63 degrees equals 12 over x. When we're trying to solve for x, we have to get the x off the denominator. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by x on both sides. By multiplying x on both sides, these now divide to 1. And I'm left with x times the sine of 63 degrees equals 12. Now again, I need to solve for x, correct? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 60, sine of 63 degrees. I don't know why I did that. Therefore, x equals 12 divided by the sine of 63 degrees. Now we're not done yet. We still need to go ahead and plug this in our calculator. So we want to make sure our calculator is in degree mode. And if you don't have, you don't know if it is, I can show you or at least help you how to put it into mode. It should automatically be in degree mode, but it could also be in radian mode. So I'm just going to take 12 divided by the sine of 63. And my answer is 13.4. So therefore, x equals 13.47. I'm going to round to the hundreds. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, does that make sense in this triangle? Would that, does that sound like a reasonable number for my hypotenuse to be? Right? Sometimes if you get a radian and it's like 2, well, the, obviously you know the hypotenuse cannot be 2 if one sine length is 12, right? So then you know you did something wrong. Okay? Or if this like, hypotenuse was like 856, okay, something's wrong because that should not be that large. All right? 